at the moment, as we know, we have like uh, double commemoration. So 8th of May as a day of reconciliation, and then 9th of May as the Victory Day. Actually, the first one, so like the 8th of May, is a newly invented holiday, which seeks to, let's say, uh, promote a kind of an all European. Uh, vision of the Second World War in Ukraine. The 9th of May is a Soviet Brezhnev holiday, still the Victory Day. The very existence of those two dates shows uh, that at least Ukrainian government understands that Ukrainian society is a society in transition, is a society with variety of social experiences, and that there are a lot of people, millions of people, who do need 9th of May to be celebrated on the state's level, but there are also people who are pretty critical about this date. So now you have like both holidays. And of course this Ukrainian 9th of May is different from the current Russia's 9th of May, uh, but in my view it's also, it's not bad actually, because it shows us that history could be read or commemorated in a pluralistic way. Um, the building, of course, was built in uh, Imperial Germany for the first uh, uh, Parliament of the German Reich in the 1890s uh, and so on. And it was burned down famously in 1933. What is a bit mysterious is why it is such a big ro um, role in, in Soviet official memory culture. You know, Sturm, Reichstage, whatever, you know, you have all these. Um, uh, official movies and anecdotes about it because actually of course the Nazis did not want a parliament did not have a parliament the building was a ruin already before the Battle of Berlin and when it was conquered by the Soviet soldiers it was actually a very meaningless building because of course Hitler didn't want a parliament and it was just you know raising the flag on the Reichstag um, was something that became famous but actually for the Nazi regime the Reichstag didn't really have a have a meaning and so far it's funny that uh, some people in the Soviet Union perceive it as a symbol of Nazism, which really it isn't. Not at all. Uh, where I grew up in the West, um, there was not much at all, actually, you know. On the other side, in East Germany, it was, you know, officially called Liberation Day, and I think there were a lot of celebrations in schools, official party celebrations. Ukrainian memories of the Second World War, they are complex, so they include numerous topics. And let's say starting from the Holocaust and the Nazi idea of the destruction of the Jewish community in Ukraine, and then we have the stories like the deportation of the Crimean Tatars, the story of the Soviet and anti-Soviet underground, the story of Ukrainian cooperation with the Nazis very much, it's also an important issue, and so, so on. And you see, I would say that in case of Ukraine, all those stories could not be just reduced to one single narrative. And that's actually what we see on political, social, cultural, whatsoever levels in Ukraine. We have the kind of a competition and coexistence of the various narratives. So we have the uh, post-Soviet narrative, which could be first and foremost attributed to the Brezhnev era, commemoration of the Great Patriotic War. We have a nationalistic narrative, which is very much based on the, let's say, uh, extremely positive view of Ukrainian nationalistic underground. Then we have some, let's say, local narratives, like special narratives, like the Jewish narrative of the terrible story of the Shoah in Ukraine, the Polish narrative uh, about the Volinian massacre of the peaceful Polish population committed by the Hupa, Crimean Tatar narrative. Their experience under Nazi occupation was a different one. And we see that on the political level, there is an attempt to, let's say, combine at least those two main narratives. I mean the post-Soviet and the national one. The 
narrative that we now have in Germany is, is very much um, or very closely related to this, you know, whole West European narrative about... Of course, the problems with that is that the whole Soviet story doesn't really fit in. You know, as you know from Ukraine, it's also a part of the problem with the date. You know, you celebrate on the 8th or on the 9th of May, that makes a big difference. Um, and But then also the, the more larger historical question, whether the Red Army could actually bring liberation or freedom to other countries. Of course, that is very controversially discussed also in Poland or Czech Republic or these countries, you know, could the Soviets, could Stalin actually liberate us in a way? In Russia, you have the tendency at least to always construct a positive narrative about the past. I mean, even if Stalinism is something that's really terrible, uh, then it was, after all, necessary to prepare for the war, or Stalin was the effective manager, or whatever. You know, you invent something um, to make it uh, sound as, as or to, to, to make it look like part of a glorious national past, and that you can build national identity also on historical responsibility for crimes like the Holocaust, like the invasion of Poland, like the invasion of the Soviet Union or something.